Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at J Wonder on the Make Code Forum. And today we are working on our pool game. Remember pool, Joey? This is how you play pool, right? Yeah. Um, it's just like it's a, a, free it's a way to play pool. Yeah. Um, so where we left off yesterday was we had, you know, let me actually bring up yesterday's code because I have it. Um, do, do, do. This is it. So here's where we left off yesterday. Um, we had we were doing physics, um, but we had a little bug, which we'll see if it happens. There it is, um, where everything just goes to hyperspeed pretty often, you know? Um, and so this morning I was like, oh boy, we can spend all stream debugging that and figuring out what the issue is and all of that. Or, I could just rewrite the physics before stream, um, which I did. And it only took me half an hour. So it just really shows you when you can sit down with a Wikipedia article, look at the equations, you know, it's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> it is a lot harder to uh, be entertaining while doing things. Yeah. So anyway, um, let's go to my new code and we'll kind of go through it real quick. Um, so let me, let me take out the chaos right now. So the code is pretty much the same. Um, the only thing I changed was the physics, like I said. And um, I went ahead and drew some some more art, as I often do before stream. So I actually put, you know, like pockets on the table. They don't do anything yet. And um, I drew all of the pool balls. So, you know, they just all have a color and some of them are striped. Um, and I would really like to make them so that they turn, but I can't even begin to think of how to do that. You know? Do you have an idea, Joey? Not right away. Yeah. But anyway, so I press A, launches the cue ball, and you can watch these guys bounce around. All right, so the physics. Um, so when I was doing the physics for this, um, I just went over to um, the Wikipedia article for elastic collision. Da, da, da. And um, if you scroll down here to two-dimensional collision with two moving objects, here's your equations. Yes. It's just that easy. Um, so these take into account mass, but we don't have mass in this case, or rather all of the balls are the same mass. So you can factor that out. So that actually removes this part right here because it has M1 minus M2. And it also gets rid of this two in this divisor because if you just say one plus one and then two, you know, they just go away. So yeah. get rid of that. By factoring so out, the easy way is just make everything one, right? That's, that's what you're yeah. just to be clear. So the equation just ends up being, so the x component is just the um, speed times cosine of the um, other angle minus phi and, uh, sorry, rho. That's rho, right? No, it's phi. Um, I thought rho uh, was some fish egg stuff, but I'm not sure. Yeah, the, the, the squiggly is, is the loop-de-loop -loop is phi. Um, and phi, by the way, is the angle of the collision um, times the cosine of phi plus the speed of um, the current one, sine, theta, minus phi, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Um, so you can just take this and plug in. V1 is the speed of the first object. Theta1 is the movement direction of the first object. Theta2 is the movement direction of the second object. V2 is the um, speed of the second object. And um, then you have uh, phi, which is the angle of the collision. Yeah. And um, uh, to switch this for V2, um, like get the velocity of the second object, all you have to do is change all of those ones into twos and also take your collision angle and add phi to it. So that's it. And um, are we still doing it? So we're just doing a once over each during the collision? Nope. Um, no. So I took away that optimization because I just, I don't know, I felt like it and it ended up, it doesn't matter. Um, so physics, what is the, that I was using those equations, yes, but the main change I would say that I made was I am no longer using the physics engine. Um, so that was causing, I think, a lot of the bugs. It was using the VX and VY in our physics engine, which is not really meant for doing this kind of collision. Yeah. So instead, what I do now is I'm using arcade sprite data and I'm start I'm storing VX and VY as like data on the sprites. And then I'm uh, just doing all of my own things with that. And um I also made it so that this is deterministic now. So every single frame, every on-game update, I'm doing the same amount of time. 
which is just um, I, I'm assuming we're running at 30 frames per second. So I'm just doing one second divided by 30 frames. And that's that's my time slice. Um, so each frame, I just I loop over all of my um, balls. Uh, for each of them, I set the distance traveled to be the speed times the you know time. Um, and then I get the X component and the Y component, which is DX and DY. And um, I move the ball one pixel at a time. So I move it one pixel. I see if it collides with anything. And then if it doesn't, I just keep moving it another pixel. And then I see if it collides with anything. And I keep doing that. So this prevents that problem of them going through each other. Um, and then once uh, they do actually collide, that's down here. So we're, collecting, we're checking for collisions the same way. I'm just looping over all the other ones. Um, I'm checking to see if the distance between them is less than the radiuses added together. And if they are, if it is, then they collide. And here's where I do that um, physics thing. So these are these are the equations we were just looking at right here and right here. And then um, the other thing I'm doing is um, I separate them so that they're no longer colliding. And to do that, I'm basically just taking the amount that they're overlapping, and I move them back oh, yeah. both half that amount, you know, Makes so that they're sense. not overlapping anymore. You did um, phi instead of uh, the symbol. You could have got the Unicode character. Included. You're, you're actually, you know, I would have done that if I had thought of it. But um, yeah. And then um, uh, and then after that, we are I do the collision with the um, board, like the the outside of the um, pool table. And um, it's exactly the same as it was before. Um, and then lastly, I apply the friction. Um, so right now I have friction set to zero right here. And so um, with that, um, we'll see these balls are just going to bounce forever. It's actually kind of peaceful to watch, but um, you know, it's not realistic. So we can just put in a value here, whatever we want. You know, um, I'm going to put in, I guess, 10. I don't know. We'll see if we'll see how that feels. Yeah, that seems decent. I, I, we'll, we'll go with this for now, and we can we can tweak it if it ends up being like ridiculous. Hmm. Can we uh, pop that uh, speed up to by like two or three times for the break? Uh, sure. I mean, so when we actually do it, we're gonna have you. We're gonna have like some way for you to control the speed of your shot, right? Yeah. I, I just want to see it like super fast. There you go. Yeah. That's that a, feels more. That's, that's like more like a good, media, uh, good break. I think that's what I see most. Yeah. By the way, the physics are deterministic now. So if you memorize where all of these things are, um, and then if I do this again, they're going to end up in the same spot uh, because uh, we no longer have to deal with the different amounts of time in between each frame, which means that our physics are always just going to run exactly the same way, which is kind of fun, you know. Um. All right. Cool. By the way, one other thing I want to address before we actually get into coding. Um, uh, so for this elastic collision thing with two moving objects, um, there is actually another one um, up here, I think, which has one moving object. But I realized that um, if we had one moving object, um, it's, it's actually trivial to change this, because all we have to do is set M1 to be infinity. Right. Yeah, that's what we said before, right? We, we said that mostly as a joke. But. Yeah, and that just cancels this out entirely right here, right? Yeah. And then it just becomes V1 of sine of the angle minus, you know, phi and all of that stuff. So it's it's really easy. Um, That's the part where, where a napkin and a, a pencil really help you out. Yeah, exactly. I was working it out on some, some paper here. <laughs> anyway, all right, with all that, let's get into the actual coding. So um, what do I want to do today? Well, we want to do the actual aiming and shooting. So I, I, the way I see it, there's a few things that we have left to do. So one is the aiming and shooting, like I said. Two is just kind of like the game logic. So we want to make, we need to detect when you win or when you lose, you know, like which version of pool we are going to be playing. There, there are a million different rules for pool. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, we need to detect when we actually get into one of the pockets, right? Um, so uh, the I think that actually won't be too bad because you can see the balls actually. I made the pockets much bigger than the the balls, so I, th I think we can just detect literally when we're like close enough to where a pocket is, and then we'll just animate it going in, 
and we'll see how that works. You know, maybe we'll put in a percent chance that it bounces out or something like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. But today, I just wanted to do the moving and shooting. Um, so, um, I think we're going to go with the classic power gauge design for determining how much to fill in. I don't know if you have another idea of how we could do that. Wait, how much to fill? Like how oh, much? Oh, sorry, sorry. What, how speed? much power to like hit it with? Can we can we draw a, a Q stick and just have it based off of that? What? Well, I mean, just like draw the stick and then how far back you pull it is how uh, hard you're going to shoot it. Oh, which is I a see. power gauge, which is a power gauge in fairness, right? But the power gauge is abstracted away because it's the distance you are. I don't know if I want to programmatically draw a pool cue. That that was where I was uh, landing with that in my head, but I I had to mention it. I had to mention the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Okay, um, yeah. So what what we're talking about, by the way, with the power gauge, um, for people who have never, I guess, played a sports game, um. It's very common. You have a bar and it's filling up and down mm -hmm. kind of like rapidly. And then you press A when you want it to stop. And that's where your power is. So it yeah. kind of ends up putting in, in some randomness because, you know, no one has the reflexes to get it exactly where they want. Um, mm -hmm. And you kind of have to, you know. And there's always some wiggle room to this. Like there, there's lots of designs that are very similar to this. Uh, if you look up like golf games, you'll probably every single one of them has something slightly different, but they all yeah. end up being the same thing of like, you hold down this button and then release it that the, the most powerful, right? All these are basically the same. Usually they yeah. have two actually, because they have like power and then like angle that you're doing and they're very similar usually. One that I actually really like is, um, let me let me figure it out actually. Um, Kirby Superstar. And then what was the name of this game? Okay, so Kirby Superstar um, was a Kirby game for the Super Nintendo. And it had um, a bunch of different games in it. It had eight games. I forget, was um, this the one that they remade um, for the Game Boy Advance and that had that like exact timing-based game that we've remade before? I think they well that that's been in a bunch of Kirby games. Yeah. Um I guess it, it was the original. Megaton Punch. Um this one got remade for the DS, I think. Gotcha. Uh okay. Thank you, Nerd Thing, for this YouTube video. All right. Um so uh let me let me restart this. So Oh wow, um, that's Okay, I, I know what you're talking about now, and now I think oh, this is fun. Yeah, so you can see that's the power gauge, and then they have this little aim thing afterwards that you have to do, where you have to get the circles to line up, and then there's this last one, which is a pendulum that you have to line up, and once you've done all three of those things, um, it calculates how much damage you did with your megaton punch. Yeah. If you do it perfectly, it shows you a little thing of you cracking open the entire planet, which is uh -huh. fun. Also, yeah. Mario. See, this is uh, especially fun because if you're looking at it, you can basically see that these are Twice. all the same, the same thing, the same action being done. It's just a rendering layer on top of it of how you display it, which is fun. Yeah, but also I do want to point out Mario and Luigi, Mario and Luigi, they're in the audience twice. Wait, what? That's messed up, man. I guess they <laughs> they wanted them to cheer on both players. Probably probably it was only on like the right to start with, and somebody's like, that, that's kind of messed up that one person gets both Mario and Luigi cheering on them. Yeah, we knew that Mario and Luigi were brothers, but we didn't know that they were also both twins, but not with each other. All right. That's some good deep lore, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so let's start with aiming. Um, so how we're going to do aiming is I think we'll just draw a line or something. I, I want to draw a dotted line. I don't know how much of a pain that's going to be. Yeah, this will be fine. Um, OK, so we're going to do this using the Sprite Utils. And Cue Phoenix asked, where do Wario and Waluigi fit into this? I don't think they're brothers. 
I don't think it, Wario and Waluigi are even related to each other. Are what are they? Are they? I mean, okay. So the answer is, Nintendo needed more characters to fill out their sports games. All right, and that's where Wario. But they and needed Luigi some like edgy characters, from. probably. No, I don't think so. Would you call Wario edgy? I don't. I don't know if I can call Wario edgy. I think so. I mean, he's always being shown. Vaguely crime-ish, right? I guess, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. Plus, he's on know. a motorcycle. Can you imagine Mario on a motorcycle on your average motorcycle coming in outside um, of Mario Kart? Just like yeah, your average say, day-to-day life. I can't because I've seen him be on a motorcycle many times. You know. I don't know, man. I feel like it's messed up that they, they even allow him on a motorcycle. They should have kept him only cart. They are not brothers. They are. Waluigi's a friend of Wario. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, and, you know, Wario actually has story. Waluigi is an enigma. No one has ever given Waluigi any any story. I mean, he was like the best in Mario Kart for a while, I think. I, I vaguely remember that. Um... All right. So here's what we're doing. We're going to draw a dotted line. Um, and the way we're going to be doing this is basically we have an aim angle that we're doing. And um, inside of this render on Z index, we're going to just draw a certain number of points away. And we're just going to calculate the position using that aim angle for each of these. Um, and then just put a point onto the screen. Um, and together, that's going to end up making a nice little dotted line for us. Um, are you still learning about Waluigi and Wario? Yeah, apparently in the American version, they were uh, originally introduced as related, but then that got like uh, retconned. Retconned. Yeah, retconned. What what game were they originally reduced, introduced in? Uh, let me pull up the Wikipedia article. Uh, the, the Mario Tennis to be explicitly to be Luigi's, uh, you know, rival. Mm. And that was for the Game Boy Color? What was the first Mario to this? I think so. Or it wasn't N64. That doesn't make sense. That could have been the first one. I guess it could have. Did Waluigi really not come out until N64? Kind of messed up. Huh. I mean, where would he have been before that, you know? Okay. I guess he could have been just hiding, waiting for his time to emerge. No, the Nintendo executives were like, you can't have, we only have two characters canonically in the Mario universe. They're Mario and Luigi, and sometimes yeah. Yoshi. Yeah. And, um, you know, Peach, who is also sometimes named Pauline. That is kind of weird, too, yeah. All right, writing code, writing code, writing code. Convert degrees to radians. There we go. Aim angle. And that's what I want. All right. Now I grab this chunk. Go over here to the Y part there. And because it's Y, we change this to be sine. Pull this over because our block has gotten super long. And we'll change this to be. Uh, what's the color I'm not using? Uh, we'll just do white. It's white. Um, okay. Hmm. Shouldn't this be drawing already? Oh, I might have to render it a higher Z index. There we go. All right. Uh, that's not quite working right. Did I? Yeah, I left. I left X over there. This should be Y. There you go. Cool. Okay. So we're we're drawing a nice little dotted line where we're aiming. Um, let's go ahead and um, we'll we'll tweak this to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, but first, we're going to um, do uh, the actual like changing of the angle. Um, and for that, we're going to be using the left and right repeat events. And luckily, I accidentally added the controller package to this project before. Because, Joey, I don't know if you've ever done this, but 
extensions is right next to math. So if you click extensions twice, you end up clicking on a card <laughs> and it's where a controller is. And I've That's done good. this like- It's a good five. one to add. It's it basically hovers nothing. It's like three blocks that don't really need to be there. I've done this like five times and there's no way to remove packages, so. Yeah. All right. So on left button repeat, on right button repeat, we're going to be changing our aim angle by some amount. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and do um, angle change rate. We're going to set this to be, I don't know, five degrees. And so inside of the right button repeat, um, this one's easy. We are just going to change our angle, or actually we should use a set probably. Going to set our aim angle to remainder of aim angle plus our change rate. Divided by 360. Now, um, for left, we're going to do something very similar. Um, so because we're using modulo, we can't do minus. Um, so, uh, but it's it's easy to actually um, convert it. All you have to do is um, whatever you're subtracting, just add the maximum value minus that. That'll end up being the same thing. So we're going to add uh, 360 minus our angle change rate. All right, so now if I press left and right, there we go. Okay, cool. So we got a nice little aiming thing now. Um, which, yeah, it turned out pretty well, I guess. Do I want to put a little X at the end? Like that. I right, see what that looks like. Oh, I need to center it because, um, yeah. All right, I need to uncenter it. Um, so that's just going to be um, this minus half the width, right? Mm -hmm. Which will be There we go. I don't know. Do we like the X? Yeah. Make it a less. Maybe we can make uh, the dots into lines. So it's like a, a long line at first and then shorter lines until it gets to just a dot. Would that look interesting? It looks, be it it looks much better, I feel like, with the shorter. With the, that does the look way better. Tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, so how hard is it to do lines? That's kind of complicated, isn't it? It is probably complicated to do in blocks, yeah. Um, what if instead... Well, maybe I could just do... Do a for loop uh, just uh, slightly further out uh, inside the for loop. Oh, I could just do a second for loop where I add one.
But anyway, let's see how that looks. Uh, that, that actually worked pretty well. I, I don't actually I don't know how I feel about this. Two pixel lines just kind of look weird. Is the thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It looks good sometimes when you stop, but then yes. other times it just looks bad, right? That's the vibe. So probably better yeah. not to do it. We'll just do the dots. Great. And we could also make the dots a different color. Let me make them tan. Nah. Just leave it white. All right, good enough. I don't like that the initial aim position looks bad. Like this. Yeah. Could uh, what what are we setting offsetting it by? Two Can and a half. Offset it by one. Like it's correct here, right? Yeah, I guess it is. Um. Uh, we can off. Well, let's try offsetting it by two, I guess. Wait, what size is it? It's, it's five by five. Okay, there we go. Yeah, because we, we really just want to push the top two up because we need the middle one to be centered. So it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. And um, I think maybe we also want to subtract one from the Y so that it's centered on here because this is five by five. So there is a center pixel. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and subtract one from this. And this one too. There you go. Nice and centered. OK, now that we got that, let's go ahead and actually um, use that for our angle. Um, so we are going to over here. We pass in an angle, and this angle is actually in radians. Um, so for this, we are going to just convert our degrees into radians. Yes. Um, and so now I can go ahead and aim like this, and then fire. Well, when that takes a really long time to slow down, maybe we need to up the friction. I don't know. It's fine when it gets like transferred to all these other things, but also we we might just be putting too high of an initial velocity on this. You know, we did kind of just turn it up for fun. Um. I don't know. I mean, when you when you hit uh, footballs, you hit them hard for the break. That's the whole part of the break. Mm -hmm. Also, Key Phoenix says canonically, Pauline is separate and is the mayor of New Donk City. Yes, I believe that was retconned. I'm pretty sure Pauline and Peach were the same person for the first few games. That um, is what I remember it as. Uh... But in Super Mario Odyssey, they did um, make uh, Pauline her own character who, who sings. OK. Wait, Pauline? Pauline was the name that was used in Donkey Kong before yeah. Peach was introduced. Yeah. Justin. Eh, whatever. OK. So now I got this. Um, let's do our power gauge. Thing. And I swear we've coded this a million times on stream. We're just going to go ahead and um, add another extension. We are going to add status bar. Ooh. Uh, Joey cheering for his own extension. Number one. Um, OK, uh, so let's go ahead. We'll style this guy a little bit. We're going to give him a border. Points. Give it a height of six. Give it a width of, I don't know, 60. There we go. We're going to label this. Power, all caps. 
There we go. And we're going to put this down here kind of at the bottom of the screen. Um, starts with an S. S comes after. There we go. Um, so. Joey, do you ever do tier makers? Tier makers? Like, yeah, you know, like you're, tier you have lists? a bunch of things and you end up doing a, a tier. Um, uh, no, I avoid those because it, it seems like a lot of work. But I, I know what you're talking about. Like, okay, you want to put well, all the characters from uh, all the horses, uh, from Harvest Moon's horse racing, that sort of thing. Uh, you want to rank all of them by their like, identity. Right. That makes sense. Yes. Well, recently um, I did what is I'm pretty sure is the stupidest tier thing you could ever possibly do with a group of friends, including Shannon, okay. actually. Um, and it was ranking in a tier list all the letters of the alphabet. And oh, boy, was it contentious. It was that, tough. That does seem pretty good. What I got to ask, which one was the last one? What did I put last? Yeah. C. Uh, C? Yeah. It's a useless letter. It is a it is a useless letter. S and K completely cover it and yeah. are unambiguous. C, C is either an S or it is a K. Or I guess and a CH, but that's kind of like it's kind of like now, it. you could also say the same thing about X, but X is cool. So yeah. we can keep that. X can say. Like, how many people on their gamer tags when they were younger had CC, cool name right here, CC? That doesn't happen. It's always mm -hmm. XX. Exactly. My, my thoughts, yep. Joey, I'm uh, considering advertising extensions on my website. You can pay me to make your the cards of your extension stand out. I could just make them stand out more on my own. I can, put the, I can change the order there in the list of approved extensions. <laughs> it's need, true. I don't need to pay anybody. Joey, Joey has the best advertising mechanism, which is he has access to the source code of our games. Um, okay, so we're going to have a state variable that we're going to assign a string, and um, we have a few different states that we're going to be moving between. All right, so our first state is break. And um, for break, um, there is no aiming. But you know, we're just gonna do the power. It's gonna be just the start of the game. Well, actually, there is aiming in a break, but it's special aiming, right? So um, I mean, yeah, it has to be like vaguely towards it, right? Like you have to it has to hit the head ball, I think. Yeah, I I I actually I've seen some I've seen different pool games, and this might just be uh, a reflection of different pool rules. Um I've seen some that let you move the ball in a line and then do a horizontal break. Um but I think you're right. I think I think you can aim wherever you want. It's just, um, you know. I think there's some level of rules about like how much it has to be broken, though. I'll, I'll look it up. I, I thought I think it is like it had like the break has to break enough. Yeah, look it look it up. Um, and for now, for now, I'll just do aiming and like, you know, power and then waiting for the thing to resolve and then keep going. But I, I would actually like to know. OK, um, for a break to be legal, at least four balls must be driven to the rail. So at least four of the balls have to hit a have to hit the side or a ball must be pocketed. So a ball has to either score or four of them have to touch one of the walls. All right. Yeah, this is, this is a legal one. All right, so <laughs> um, this is eight ball, but yeah. We maybe need to make the aiming a little bit more granular if we want you to actually have like control with the initial break, you know? That's Can my zoom in a little. In the code or in the. Oh, I, I was saying like we zoom in on the on the on the ball a little bit but that wouldn't work very well in this case yeah okay whatever Let, let's let's do this so we're setting our state to aim right now um and we're going to go ahead and put this aiming code that we have we're going to go ahead and wrap this inside of, of um if our state equals aim okay we got some more comments it's weird because no pool game captures the difficulty of hitting the ball 
but with the stick. I mean, in, in most games, you're typically portraying somebody competent at whatever you're playing, right? Like, it's it's uh, it's rare that you get, like, a baseball game where you, you're going in there and it's just, like, you're swinging, but, like, no matter what, you're, like, not going to hit it because that ball is going 100 miles an hour and, like, there's no it's, chance. It's, it's rare that you play a snowboarding game and you uh, get your snowboard, like, caught in snow and break which has happened to multiple people I know. Yeah. Um, or you're, you're skiing, and the first thing that it teaches you is, okay, you do the pizza first to make sure that you're not going to hit a tree or something. Like that, that's pizza, not enough. Pizza. French fry. Pizza. Yeah. French fry. Uh, make it pizza so there is a 50% fry. chance of missing the ball when you press A. So you either skim or completely miss it. I wonder if that's an interesting mechanic. So you put, we have like three stages. Here. I don't think so. <laughs> no, no, not, not, not like completely miss it, but I think, I think you might like vaguely what I'm going for. So you have like a three stage one. You aim approximately where you're like lining it up with, where you're, with your stick. And you have another one where you, we show the stick going like this up and down, uh, like alongside the ball. So you choose where on the ball you hit it and then a power gauge. Okay, 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 okay. So then you like you can add spin and stuff like that, right? Like you hit the ball, but you hit it the cue ball, but you hit it on like the edge so that it spins around. Ah, seems like a pro move. <laughs> um, you we can even make it like 3D too if we want to be really cool, right? Okay, you start working on the 3D aiming at the ball mini game, and I'll tack it onto this game. I really want to make it so that the balls rotate. I just can't even. I like. I. I. I just. I, I mean, I didn't give it much thought. I just kind of thought about it for a second. I don't. I don't know how to do that. Do you? I mean, we do have half the balls rotating, basically. <laughs> well, no, they should have a white dot on them. A white okay, circle. Okay, that's on them, fair. Right? That's fair. We can just call that like a rendering impossibility. Um. Do we keep an angle on each? Uh, so I guess what I'd be thinking of is programmatically drawing the the line on it, and just keeping an angle in sprite data, and then looking up whatever we need to to do the phys like that actual angle. But that seems like a lot. Mm, yeah. How much is that actually? Or um, I guess maybe the best would be to just say we'll make it look vaguely like it. Make an array for each uh, for the stripe for each stripe ball, and just have the sprite data like pick a random index and rotate that way. So it like feels like it is when they're stopped. It doesn't do it, but like every three pixels of movement, we swap to a random uh, index. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. Um, we might try some of these out, but we'll we'll do it later, not today. Yeah. Um, I am I am interested. I do wonder if that would actually look convincing or not. It might look good. Um, you know. I mean, it's low okay. enough uh, pixel density. You probably. Could... I don't think anybody's going to complain too much. Yeah. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. So um, we're switching our state into power. We're setting our stats bar value to zero. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go into on game update. You know. Yeah, let's do it in a separate on-game update. Um, I don't like doing everything in one. <laughs> and we're going to say um, if state equals power. Then we are going to change our status bar value by our power bar change rate. There we go. And we're going to, we're just going to use the default value for this, by the way, which is 0 to 100. So we're going to see when it equals 100, we're going to flip our direction. And so for our direction, we're actually going to have to store a Boolean for that. So let's do um, power bar change direction. Um, or let's do power bar filling up. Um, and we'll set this to be true for the initial thing right here. Do, 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 true. Okay. And if our status bar value equals um, 
100, then we are going to set it to, to be false. Else if it equals zero, we're going to set it to be true. And um, so right here, we're just changing it by the power bar change rate. So we need to we need to actually check and change it by either positive or negative based on if we are filling up or emptying out, I guess would be the opposite. So this for filling up and then zero minus this for out. Mm -hmm. All right. So go ahead and press A and whoa, OK, that didn't work. Um, let's see. Change test per value by power bar change rate. Power bar change rate is zero. That won't work. Oh. All right. Fills up, hits the top, goes back <gasps> down. Looking good. Does your thing handle floats? Um, it maxes out unless you set the flag for it. So kind of. Yeah, okay. so it, there's a flag for saying whether I should keep track of it if you go past the max or not. And so that's the, the off by default. So it'll cap out. Both directions. Yeah, I don't actually care about that. I was just wondering, does it does it store an integer internally or does it just store whatever number you give it? I think it stores whatever number you give it, but I did write this th four years ago. Yeah, I, I figured that's what it was. Um, oh, that's true. You haven't changed the code at all, have you? Not much. It's, it's pretty comprehensive, so. I mean, I haven't gotten any. Have I got any feature requests? I haven't noticed any uh, issues. Well, I mean, like I said, it's pretty comprehensive. Like, I don't know. The only thing that I always wish is um, I wish there was a mode where the label was. I want the white to extend and I want the label to be inverted. I really want that. So that's my feature request. I could be convinced of that. That does sound yeah. nice. Um, uh, all right. Yeah, the only three issues are things that I filed on two issues. One issue I filed on myself, one from Pelly and one from Shannon. Thanks. OK, cool. So we got that. We have our power filling up. And now when we press the A button, we need to actually use that power value. So I'm going to say 200, what we've kind of been using right now, that's just going to be our maximum power because that hits it pretty hard. Um, and so we'll do 200 times our value uh, divided by 100 which should just give us a value between 0 and 200 for our thing. So I divide this by 100 and multiply by 200. So it's the same as multiplying the value by 2. Yay, math. There we go. All right, so now I can do um, a little baby hit if I want. There we go. It didn't even move. Oh, kind of cute. We're like halfway. Boom. There we go. Was that one yes. legal? I didn't see. Did that orange ball bounce off? I, I couldn't tell. All right, here. Um, one, two. I think that was the red, purple, and brown. I don't think the red did. Breaking the law. On to that one was that one looked legal because I think the red stripe red ball brown ball yeah that one is legal. <laughs> All right, we don't we don't actually care about that. We're not going to check that. Um, so, you can I did look at that. It, it's a nice looking pool game. Um, maybe someday we can make something. Try that out. Try and see if we can copy that style of rendering. All right. Um, okay, so let's get back to it. Um, I'm going to, oh, um, also, it's been bothering me this whole time and I keep forgetting to do it. I just want to erase the corners on this guy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I didn't want to say it. Was that actually bothering you or are you making fun of me? A, a little bit. <laughs> it wasn't bothering me enough to mention it, but. <laughs> um. Okay, 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 okay. Did I ever do um, rounded right, cool. corners for status bars? I forget. I was going to do round corners. I don't know if we got to it. That would be nice also. Yeah. Um, if you gave it like, yeah, that would be cool. Um, okay. 
Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and head over to um, our next state. So when we were in the state of waiting, we want to um, uh, detect when the balls are no longer moving, and then we can go back to the aim state. Right? All right, so um, let's go to our physics. And um, inside here, we are going to make a variable. It's going to be, um, did a ball move? We're going to set this to be false. And here we are going to say, if distance traveled is greater than zero, set data ball move to true. And now here at the bottom, we just say if not variable data ball move, then um, we're going to do a check and see if our state is waiting. And if it is, we are going to go back to aiming. Have a be where the stick is constantly shaking. You have to hit it at the right time. Uh, the longer you wait, more it shakes. It could be fun to make this based off the accelerometer on uh, hardware. I guess on simulator too, because that can really do support on the simulator. Uh, no, I was afraid of this. Uh, wait, oh wait, did I name the initial state aiming or aim? It might just be A. Are you think we're not getting down to zero? It's possible. I think it should, though. I think it should get to zero. Feels like it should. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, nice. All right, cool. Um, Yeah, radical. Uh, so we're about out of time. So is there something quick we can do here? We we could add accelerometer in to slightly randomize the angle. Oh, I don't love that. No. Well, OK, we might do some fun mode for this game at the end where we do something like that. But we're going to do that at the end of the game once we've done everything else. OK, just so we get the uh, basics. of. So other of ideas game. for that one is uh, we spawn like every time you uh, you you're about to shoot, we spawn like 10 coins on there. And so you're trying to collect coins while also winning. Interesting. I might do something like that. Hey, by the way, what is your favorite pool game you've ever played um, on a like, computer game? Video oh. video game. Oh. Um, I, don't, I don't have any that's stuck in my mind enough to actually remember that, to be honest. I'm sorry. Oh. Super Monkey Ball 2. Great pool game. Is, is there like an actual pool mode in there? Yeah. Okay, that, that would stick in my head if I had played that. Did you ever play Super Monkey Ball 2? No, not Super Monkey Ball 2, no. Super Monkey Ball 2 to, yeah. rules. Um, not only is the main game super fun and super difficult, all of the mini games are bangers. That game yeah. is... Uh, and as a kid, I felt ridiculous playing it because it's called Super Monkey Ball 2. But then we started playing it, and I had so much fun, I didn't care anymore. Yeah, Super Monkey Ball 2 is GameCube and maybe... Not I think it also was on PlayStation, but the GameCube version was the the better one. Okay, so it wouldn't be we don't have it on the Nintendo because Nintendo only goes up to N sixty four. They no, the they um they made it on Switch. Um, they re released it. What was it called? Super Monkey Ball Ultra? Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz? Super Monkey Ball something? Um, banana Blitz sounds like something. Banana Blitz HD. They they they. they like took one and two and stitched them together and released it as a Switch game. Gotcha. Recently. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. I will buy that right now. All right. 
another sale for me. Another commission in my pocket. Um, just kidding. All right, um, so uh, let's detect if we get into uh, the pockets. That won't be too hard, right? 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 I mean, probably not too hard to, to get something that feels vaguely right. Yeah, OK, well, you know what? We're not going to have time to code this today, so let's just talk about how we're going to do it. So um, I think what we're going to do is just after we do the collisions, we will, and movements, we will just detect where we are, right? Like, how far is a ball away from a socket location? And if it's close enough to that location and it's heading in a, a direction that would cause it to go in, we will count that as going in and we'll just animate it at that point because there's a wall here, right? So there's yeah. a, a wall here. So we, we just kind of have to detect it and then like do our own little thing for it. I th I think that will end up feeling real bad, probably. So we'll have really? to play around with it. Uh, I, I feel like it's going to end up having to be at like shooting time because there is like dampening typically on them so that like, like there's a hole there, right? Like if you hit it in there mid ball it's probably going in if you hit the back of it even if it like bounces out in the physics right now yeah so what i'm saying is like if we are if we are if we are close to the hole and we are going in the direction of the hole oh oh i was thinking of it okay yes okay that how you're saying it makes sense this is like you're talking about right after the physics not after they stopped i was thinking stopped as in like when we go back to the aiming, not stopped as in for the. Oh fire. no 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 no. Okay, no, no. I was feeling yeah. I was feeling sketch out there. That makes sense. That should that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. So if the if the ball was here, um, and it's overlapping with the the pocket, we would consider that a hit. Except um, we need to make sure we're going in an angle that would actually result in it going in. Because you know yeah. if you played pool before, you know it can look like it's going in, and then you bounce off the bumper, and then it comes back out. So um, okay. And if yes. we do that, we're, we're on the we'll same just... page. Then. Yes, I was misunderstanding because we had just yeah, finished I... that stop logic. Um, yeah, I'm just explaining for the audience now. Um, and um, uh, we'll we'll like capture it and we'll play a little animation because um, we'll turn it into a ghost. And we'll play a little animation where we go to the center of the pocket and it disappears. Um, so once we get that doing, we'll get into the fun business of actually doing the pool rules. And um, I think we're just going to do uh, stripes versus solids. Yeah. I mean that's 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 typical eight ball, right? You know, there's a few different versions, right? Um, but yeah, so, so are you saying stripes versus solids is in like just any of them in, or are we gonna follow the like there is a numerical ordering for them? I was gonna follow the numerical ordering, um, okay. and we'll probably have to label them. But maybe this uh, just goes down to a mode thing. If we, since I think this will be easy enough to encapsulate in a few different things, we can just have an if on it. You know what? We won't label them. We'll put a little thing up top that shows you the order. Um, like here's, and I'll have a little arrow pointing in the next one. Um, Ooh, and it's basically a scorecard too. That's nice. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, um, all right. Anyone who doesn't know the rules um, for stripes versus solids, um, basically you're playing with two players or you know two teams or whatever you want. Um, one person is trying to hit all of the solid balls in. The other person is trying to hit all of the stripes in, um, and the goal is um, the eight to get the eight ball in. So there are seven of stripes and seven of solids. So once you've gotten those in, once you've gotten your seven in, you can go ahead and hit the eight ball. You cannot hit the eight ball in. Before that, if you do, you lose. Um, so uh, when you do that, um, the other thing to keep in mind is you have to do them in order. So um, each ball has a number on it. Um, and they're actually laid out like this. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, so you have to also get them in in order. So you want to do one and then two, then three, then four. Um, yeah. Is the, nine there? Sorry. What? Are eight and nine swaps then? Because black, black is nine ball, right? No, black is eight. Yes, OK. Imagine yes, a magic eight ball, Joey. No, I, I'm looking. Oh, I'm I'm dumb. I I saw the the yellow as a as a solid 
because I couldn't tell the difference between the. Oh, yellow I, see, and I see. I see. That's why I was confusing myself. Um, and so um, the only time you can get out of that order is if you hit one of the balls in in combination with you hitting the correct number in. So if I hit in two and that also gets in seven, then that's fine because I hit two in, but it also, you know, gets one out of my way. Um, and uh, you just keep taking turns. Unless you get a ball in, if you get a ball in, and then you get to take another turn until you don't get one in and you pass it to the next person. Um, yeah, and you also can't hit any of the, of the other ones. So, or, or is that a scratch or does that just, it's just bad for you if you hit one of those in? Uh, I mean, it, it. if it goes in, the other person gets control, like right? they're going to shoot and they get a point, basically, right? They get yeah, skip. That's okay, but it's not a scratch. It's just like, um, yeah. Yeah. I think the, yeah, correct. Um, and so then the last thing is if you do break one of these rules, so you hit a ball in in the wrong order or things like that, um, actually, do you lose if you hit a ball in in the wrong order? I don't think you lose. I think you just get a scratch. I think the only um, one that matters is if you hit the uh, the eight ball in. Okay, That's yeah. So if you, if you hit one of the balls in in the wrong order, um, you get a scratch, which means that the other player on there, it goes to the other player's turn, and they can place the white ball wherever they want. So that's very advantageous for them. Um, that also happens if you have managed to hit the white ball into a pocket. Um, then you also get that power of being able to put it wherever you want, you know, the next person, because you're not supposed to put the white into a pocket. Now I'm forgetting. If it, is it any? I, this is nitpicking. Is it anywhere you want, or is it like the first quarter of it, or something like that? Uh, you get one it, anywhere. It, it depends on what version of pool you're playing. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, I think in standard strikes versus solids, you can put it anywhere you want, but I could be wrong. Okay. Um, all right. Well, anyway, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Remember, game jam starts next week. Um, and I hope everybody has a good Independence Day weekend if you are in the U.S. Um, uh, and uh, I have put some some clues as to the theme um, onto the forum. So if you want to go guess along, my favorite guess so far has been paragliding. Um, but if you weren't there, um, it's an 11 letter uh, word that starts with um, P. And um, someone on the on the forum hope, helpfully pointed out that it's 2,961 words fit that. Um, that's actually a decent, that's a good number. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was okay giving it. Um, Unsigned Arduino says more clues. I'll give you another clue either tomorrow or Friday. Um, but no more clues today. Um, also, for the record, I'm not going to say if anyone gets it right. Um, you're just going to have to wait till Monday to find out. But um, please keep guessing. I'm enjoying it. Um, uh, all right. Um, thanks for watching. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at J1 Drill on the Make Code Forum. And we'll see you on Friday. Bye.